Hello, I'm Zash, and welcome to episode 60 of my G Senjo no Mao, or the Devil on G String, Let's Read. Joining me, as always, is my co reader, Faith. The hostage crisis continues, and Usami has just called Tokita's bluff. Usami is still trying to end this peacefully, without anyone getting hurt, but it looks like Tokita will never agree to that. She wants her revenge. And to be fair, the director is showing a little bit of bravery, willing to go in there to save his daughter. Good job, man. At least you have a little bit of decency hiding somewhere in your soul. Anyway, please enjoy this next episode. Looks like things have taken a turn for the worse, Yuki thought. She paced around Misa with her arms folded. As Yuki had realized from the onset, her hostage was a weak, excuseful one at best. She should have known Haru would realize this, too. The fact that she had been able to recognize Yuki's assault as a bluff only compounded the problem. She needed to force the hostage swap quickly before things got any worse. Nessa. Mizuha, who had kept silent until now, suddenly raised her head. Her eyes were utterly vacant. Sorry for scaring you back there. Yuki subconsciously allowed her guilt to squeeze out an apology. She may have been jealous, envious of her sister's comfortable upbringing, but she was not yet prepared to cross the line of violence against this innocent girl. It's okay. Misa muttered a quiet response before returning her gaze to the floor. Yuki was nervous about the upcoming raid. As long as they know she won't harm Mizuha, they might force their way in at any time. They'll most likely try to enter via the warehouse window. If she puts a, a fight at the bottleneck there, she might be able to drive away one or two men, but those opponents were muscle from head to toe. Each man she knocked down would stand right back up and try again. Ellipsis? Haru hadn't wasted any time. A bulky black shadow stood menacingly at the window. What do I do now? Yuki looked down at Mizuha. Mizuha returned her gaze. Look, Nesson, she said in a sickeningly sweet voice. Yuki would have to cross that line. Ellipsis. Ellipses. What's going on in there? I asked one of Gonzo's subordinates for a quick report. One of the smaller men had been given a boost up to the window and was peeking through. I can't really see what's going on. Think we should break the window? I casually looked over to Usami. Would that be all right? Of course. Oh, I never told you. Sorry. This warehouse is managed by the Azai Corporation. That's one heck of a coincidence. And why the heck don't you have the passcode? Now that I think about it, it is. Why did Tokita choose this place, anyway? Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Alright. On three. One. Two. Wait, stop. What? Yuki just sent me a text message. Is it a finger? A text message? Why didn't she just call you? A picture is attached. Oh my god. Usami's expression grew severe. I reflexively peeked at Usami's cell phone. What the? Shirtori had been cut by a sharp object. A stream of blood trickled down her thigh. The wound looked shallow, but the meaning behind that fresh blood brought a shudder to my spine. Tokida, that fucking... She really did it. All that time at school must have made me go soft. Sisters, give me a break. My heart froze up. Hey, Usami, let's call off the raid for now. Oopsies. She was likely shocked speechless. She just stared wide-eyed at the phone's LCD. 
the phone began to ring with a clamor. Usami's dumbfounded gaze stayed perfectly still as her hand pulled the phone to her ear. Did you see the picture? So pretty much she did text a finger to them. Ish. Yeah. Do you realize now that I'm serious? Oopsie. Usami didn't answer, so I spoke up in her place. People will do anything when they're cornered, huh? Tell me about it. I feel awful. I suppose these are the growing pains of rebirth. You're going to hell, Tokita. She burned a man alive last time, so I mean... This is relatively tame. I'll see you there. I may have let my guard down too much around this woman. As my disappointment in Tokita peaked, the director called out to her from behind me. I understand the situation. Please, stop this, Yuki. Tokita's cruelty to the director wasn't abated in the least by his submissive behavior. She had no mercy, even for a man who had gone pale at seeing his daughter's blood shed. If you understand, then hurry up and get in here, would you? Right, I'm coming. Did you call Katakura? I just got off the phone with him a minute ago. He said he'll be here in 30 minutes. Usami's arm didn't shoot out to stop him this time. She just watched the director's back as he trudged toward the warehouse. Something's wrong here. Usami quietly muttered something. Megalipses. Ellipses. It was true when she said she felt awful. Yuki cut the call and looked at the wound on Mizo's thigh. W was that good enough, Nessa? Thank you. Yuki struggled to say. A few moments earlier, the very moment that Yuki had seen the shadow at the window, Misa had suddenly moaned. Look, Nessa. Yuki's eyes shot open. Misa had stood up by herself despite her hands being bound and had edged over to one of the many steel containers in the warehouse. Yuki nearly screamed out in an attempt to stop her, but it was too late. Hopefully she didn't hit the femoral artery with that, uh, slice. Misa raised her thigh to the sharp corner of the container and dropped herself onto it. The sharp steel corner mercilessly tore at her bare leg. Without even crying out in pain, Misa had turned to address her sister. Will you trust me already? Without even thinking, Yuki had snapped an image with her camera phone and sent it to Haru. She felt downright awful. Yuki untied the rope binding Misa and inspected her wound. You should be alright. The bleeding's already stopped. It doesn't hurt anymore. Don't worry about it. I've got to ask. Why? Misa had shook her head. I told you I was gonna stick with you. Don't lie to me. You had your chance to do that, and you blew it. Despite her words, Yuki hated herself for not trusting in her sister. I'm going to kill your father. Are you saying you'll help me do that? Yeah. Misa nodded as if she had given up on everything. I don't believe you. It's what you want. I love you, so I'll, I'll help you out. Don't say such revolting things. Revolting, huh? You know, I've been thinking. What? Up until a few days ago, I was such a coward. I couldn't voice how I felt. I played childish mind games. I didn't even have the courage to talk to the people I wanted to talk to. Misa paused for a second and stared at Yuki. But then you came around. I didn't even really have any friends before that. And once Dad got into trouble with the law, it just got worse. I felt so tiny, so ashamed to be who I am. When you came around, suddenly every day was so much fun. Ellipses. The concert was a blast. It was? And then that late dinner with the Saikon was fun too. He said he had type A blood. Really? Anyway, I owe it all to you. You've always been the one who made my days fun. 
Misa's direct, straightforward gaze became painful to Yuki. Do you remember the name of our snowman? Yukitaru. What a stupid name. Misaho laughed feebly. I was just thinking about how much I want to make another one, and I decided on something. I'll follow you to hell if that's where you're going, Nessa. Yuki's chest threatened to rip apart, such was the pain. She desperately looked over Misaho's whole body. Eyes, hands, feet, mouth. Not a part of her little sister told her she was lying. Are you sure, Misaho? Yuki prudently scrutinized her again. That's guilty of more than the world knows. I'm not just referring to you and your mother. He always worms his way out of it somehow, but it's about time his karma caught up to him. If the police won't give him what he deserves, then it can't be helped if you usher things along. Yuki could hear the infantile naivety in Misuno's words. She was in an emotional tizzy due to the extreme situation. Saying one is willing to engage in cold, premeditated murder based on a temporary emotion immediately raises a red flag. Most likely, Mizuha is actually hoping for a situation where both the director and Yuki could be saved. It's impossible for her to hide her soft heart from Yuki's senses. But... Why? Mizuha started with a touch of loneliness. Why are we so different? Different? Yeah. We're completely different. We look different, we act different, we talk different. We barely have anything in common. What do you expect? We grew up in different situations. That's exactly right. And you hate me for it. Yuki realized Mizo's tone had been growing more firm. Do you want us to be more alike? Yeah. Why? Because we're sisters. Half sisters, Mizuho. So? What do you mean, so? I'm trying to sever even that. I'm trying to destroy the one thing we share. Our biological father. The one thing? You just said it yourself. We have nothing in common. I like talking. You're the silent type. I'm realistic. You're idealistic. What else do you think we share? One mustn't forget to mention that Yuki is an illegitimate child when Misaho was born to a proper family. There was a distinct gap there. I try to act like you in public. I put on a show of pride. Yuki laughed involuntarily. How silly. You can't fool people by pretending to be someone else. Yeah, it was stupid. I won't do it from now on. Do you honestly believe in this from now on of yours? How exactly do you imagine your future will play out after you kill your father? Yuki reprimanded Misaha harshly with her tone, and her sister fell silent. Misa's fingers twitched faintly. She was getting cold feet. Yuki sighed and looked at her knees for a moment. As she suspected, this girl wouldn't be able to commit a crime, and Yuki would never be able to hurt her, the innocent child that she is. Try to think things through next time, Misaha. Huh? I don't want to hear it. You shouldn't offer to help if you won't be able to deliver. But... I was serious. It's fine, you cheered me up quite a bit. You couldn't just sit by and watch me be upset, could you? I was serious! I want to help you! Oh, don't bother. You know lies don't work on me, do you? At that moment, a loud, rapping echo resounded from the warehouse door. Hey, Yuki! Open up! It was followed shortly by the voice of her mother's murderer. Oopsies. Oopsies. Director Shiratori showed it at the wall of the warehouse. He intends to become a hostage of his own volition. Are you sure you want to do this, sir? I talked briefly with him as I waited beside him. 
You might just be killed on the spot. Then what should I do? Just keep quiet while my daughter gets hurt? You're a good father. Now that I've a moment to look at him, I've realized he actually looks quite villainous. His sly, vulpine face was hideously warped. He's almost as tall as Gonzo, and no wonder being Tokita's father. But at the moment, he looked withered and small. Tokita's voice came to us via Usami's cell phone. I'm about to open the door. If you try to get Trixie, Mizuha will die. Oopsies. Did you get that, Haru? Cut it out already, Yuki. What are you talking about? This is the best part. And I'm asking you to put an end to this. What? Come out of there. Oh, for goodness sake, you're useless. Kosuke-kun, you can hear me, can't you? Yeah. Right now, I have a nail to Mizuha's throat. You know what I'm getting at, right? Yeah. If you open the door and we come charging in, you'll do her in. Well then, shall we? I looked at the director. He nodded from in front of the door. I'm opening it. Wait, Yuki. Usami butted in once again. Give us a little more time. I swear, just a little bit. You think you could do that for us? Why? Please. Think for a second, Harlow. I have no reason to grant your request. Then the deal is off. You'll never get the director. Usami hung up on Tokita and stood in front of the warehouse door. Hey, get out of the way! Move, Usami. I don't really care what happens anymore. I'm not Tokita or Shiratori's friend, and I'm definitely not a cop. Why do I have to go out on a limb for this? Why in hell did I end up calling in Sonoyama men? Look, I need you two to hold on a second. There's no proof that Yuki ever harmed Mizuha. Hey, you saw the picture, didn't you? Why was Shiratori bleeding if Tokita didn't cut her? I don't know, but it's possible that Mizuha is cooperating with Yuki. I realize that, but who on earth would go so far as to cut themselves? You can't say for sure that she didn't, though. People like that only exist in fiction. You're grasping at straws so that you can keep trusting Tokita for some bizarre reason. My bizarre reasons are beside the point right now. I just want to hold out a little longer. You heard her, sir. What do you think? Usami-kun, right? I understand you're Yuki's friend. But who are you? Really? That's beside the point right now, too. Anyway, sir, the second you go in there, we're finished. Usami's cell phone rings again. However, she showed no desire to answer it. Without Tokita's orders, the director wouldn't be able to enter the warehouse. Oh, for Christ's sake, just do whatever the hell you want. I jerked my chin at the director. It's not like waiting around for this Katakura guy will hurt or anything. But Yuki ordered me to go in right now. I shrugged and waved him away. Oh, come on. She's not going to kill her if you don't come in there right this instant. That would be utterly stupid. Even if she tried, the worst case scenario, we break the window and rush in. It's not my problem that Shiratori's life is in danger. Still, who saw me? Yes. You may have pissed off our culprit, but am I right in assuming that it's part of some strategy? Oopsies. And now I'm getting the silent treatment. Megalipsies. What in God's name is she doing? Tokiyuki Yuki called her twice, but neither call was answered. What's going on? Mizuha's fear got the best of her, and she decided to ask directly. They have no intention of handing over the director. This is flipping ridiculous. Who just ignores calls from a hostage taker like that? 
If I were crazy, you'd be long dead by now. Y you aren't crazy. You don't have to reassure me about that. You've always been so kind to me. Oopsies. You feel bad about Miss Noriko, don't you? You don't want to drag innocent people into this. But Yuki did drag people into it. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and one never knows how far they'll go until they live the situation themselves. Should I cut myself again? No, she answered immediately. That would just look even more suspicious. Maybe. More importantly, Yuki didn't want to have to see her sister's blood. Do you think Haru knows I cut myself on purpose? Even if she suspects it, she can't be absolutely sure. Otherwise, they'd be charging in here right now. The precariousness of the situation weighed on Yuki's mind. The greatest weakness of her position was the poor choice of hostage. As it stood, a proper negotiation was out of the question. Nevertheless, Haru should be out of options. For now, at least. Think you should try calling again? Mizo was cooperative with Yuki to the bitter end. Yuki shook her head. No. I'll wait until they call me. When that happens, Haru will have prepared some sort of scheme. There goes my advantage. Oopsies. Oopsies. The stalemate continued for 30 minutes. Usami just stared firmly at the warehouse with her arms folded the whole time, and the director must have smoked through a whole pack of cigarettes in agitation. Eventually, an unfamiliar luxury car pulled over, its engine roaring loudly. Director Shiratori greeted the man who stepped out of the driver's seat. Katakura had finally arrived. He was a short man. The director briefed him on the situation, looking sharply downwards into his eyes. Katakura's small hands moved about restlessly as he did so. He wore thin glasses, as if to hide the brutal glow radiating from the th eyes beneath them. Will Ichi be like that when he gets older? Nah, Katakura looks a lot slyer than Aichi ever could be. What's up, Usami? Just standing around, waiting for part of the sunrise? Your cell battery must be almost dead by now. Yeah. Usami nodded, slipping in a glance at the director and Katakura. It's about time we end this. Her gaze pierced through me. You still think I'm some sort of hero of justice, don't you? Sure. Though, to be honest, I wish you'd stop waving that annoying justice around all the time. I don't mean to do that. Is that so? In any case, once you hear my plan, you might have to revise that opinion. You mean I won't think you're a hero of justice anymore? Yep. Truth is, this will be a despicable act. I wish I could avoid what I'm about to do, but I can't think of any other way. Hmm? Man, talk about a hook. You've got me interested now. It'll be a gamble. Even if I succeed, I won't guarantee Yuki surrender. That's quite shameful to admit, but it has to be said. Cut the hype and spill it already. Usami paused in hesitation, then continued. I have a favor to ask first, as I saw. What? Could you please help Yuki? Help her? What's she on about now? Define... help. You mean you want me to capture her and hand her over to the police? Or do you want me to kill her old man for her? Or maybe help her with her mental issues? Yeah. Get her some counseling? Uh, yeah. You jumped to some extremes, Kyosuke. Well, it's Kyosuke. Ten people tend to come to the Mafia for very specific help. <laughs> True. I was hoping for something in between there. No deaths, no arrests. So, a fairy tale happy ending? No, counseling, which she obviously desperately needs. Well, I guess I don't really want to explain this to the cops either. I realize this never had anything to do with you, by the way. Thanks for being here so far. Ellipses. What am I supposed to do now? 
Do you think you could help me out one last time? Ellipses. Please? To be honest, if I stopped here, I'd probably have a hard time sleeping at night. The girl knows something about Mal. Tell you what, I won't leave until I get that story out of her. I think it would make a pretty nice gift for Gonzo. Thank you. Let's just cut to this dirty plan of yours. I've known you for too long. I'm used to your dramatics. It makes me happy to hear that. God, this girl is so disgusting. I just don't believe in Yuki. I don't think she'll actually harm any innocent people, especially not Mizuho. I think she might even spare the director if it comes down to that. You do? That was the spark that inspired this plan. Not only will it be extremely dangerous, but I will be completely out of harm's way despite being the mastermind. It's completely unfair of me, I know, but... Usami raised a finger and continued. Wow. Her play really was a monstrously risky gamble. Megalipsies. Ellipses. At long last, the phone rang. It was Haru. Yuki, bracing herself against whatever trap Haru had sent for her, answered the call. My patience was wearing thin. Sorry. I needed some time to sort out my emotions. Oh, please, don't give me that. Would you mind hurrying it up and sending the director in here? Well... The director's voice flooded in. I'm waiting outside! Open up! Any complaints this time, Holly? No. We decided it couldn't be helped. Sounds like an act. Still, Yuki had to wait and see how things proceeded. I'm glad you're finally seeing things my way. Come on in then. I'll open the door in a moment. Yuki ended the call and walked to the warehouse's entrance. Nessan, what should I do? You aren't needed anymore. Once the director comes in, I'll release you. No. Mizuha shook her head obstinately. I said I wanted to help you. Why? Because I've never been able to do anything for you. It's not fair to be the one who saved all the time. Yuki objectively found that comment rather foolish. But nevertheless, it warmed her heart somehow. Anyway, I'm not moving from this spot. Yuki turned and went to the door, ignoring Mizuha as she stubbornly plopped herself on the ground. I love when people do that, like they think that they can't be picked up. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially when they're tiny little girls like, like Misa, like, yeah. Yuki could pick you up. Yeah. Immediately thereafter, I heard the sound of a latch being unlocked. The door slid open horizontally, and moonlight poured into the warehouse. Come in. Takeda peeked out, letting only her face show, and gestured the director to come in. It would probably be dangerous to just jump and rush Tokita. She might be holding a nail to Shiratori's throat behind the door, out of sight. The director walked in with fear written all over his face. Bye. I'll call you again later. Tokita all but laughed as she quickly shut the door. In the end, this really was our only choice. Oopsies. Usami silently watched over the situation's development. What was Haru's objective? Yuki carefully invited the director into the warehouse. Help, Dad! I don't want to die! A voice called out from a spot on the floor behind Yuki. Misa was still managing to act her role. She sat on the ground with her arms behind her back, pretending to be tied up. After seeing that scene, the director gave up all thoughts of resistance. Put your hands up. Any tricks and you know what happens, right? Listen to her, please. The director seemed to have given up completely as he raised his arms in surrender. His warm, middle-aged hands were oozing with sweat. Has Katakura come? Yeah, he arrived just a little while ago. He's next then. Yuki picked up a nearby crowbar. Well, 
If you have any last words, now's the time to say them. Uh, I'm sorry. I feel bad about what I did to mess it. I feel bad about what I did to Masami. Yuki's mother's sacred name came out of that man's filthy lips. It sounded to her ears as if he'd sold it. Oh? Well, aren't we quite meek today? What happened to that arrogance in your last apology? I regretted not being able to attend the funeral. Let me guess. Work? Y yeah, I was really busy. So busy you couldn't even come pay your respects, huh? Yuki mocked as her hatred erupted. But you had plenty of time to take bribes. The director flinched. Wait, what will you gain by killing me? There was a sly look in his eye. Think about this, Yuki. I know I'm not a model citizen, but is it really worth it to throw your life away over a person like me? You've got a point. I thought about that a lot. Every time I daydreamed about wringing your pathetic neck, that thought tugged at my sleeve. You killed my mother, yet you were never convicted of a crime. Why should I have to be the one to go to prison? Exactly! Calm down and rethink this! The relieved look on his face tangled Yuki's sadistic heart. But after I realized I could just flee the country afterwards... Those daydreams were never interrupted again. Her discussions with Mao's acquaintances had revealed an escape route to her. There was a smuggling boat which made regular trips between Japan's west coast and the Korean peninsula. They make fleeing the country sound like such an easy thing to do. Yeah, and North Korea is not a great place to live. No, not really. Because I'm pretty sure South Korea has an extradition treaty with Japan. Fleeing the watchful eyes of the state would be extremely difficult, but not impossible. Covering her backside after this incident wouldn't be all that hard. Yuki's largest concern lied elsewhere. Mizuha. She had been tricked, and despite being taken hostage, still loved Yuki as a sister. Could she really live with herself if she turned that kind-hearted girl into the sister of a murderer? Society was plenty cold enough to the Shiratori household without a case of patricide. Yuki wouldn't be the only one here throwing her life away. P please Yuki! That pleading insect could never induce hesitation in Yuki. However, Yuki thought back on her painful memories with her mother. She had coughed blood until she died, all the while cursing the man who told her to go die in the cold. Yuki placed her mother's suffering and her concern for Mizuha on scales, anguishing over her inevitable decision. If she had known it would have turned out like this, she would have stayed away from Mizuha. Torrential guilt washed over her. The insectoid man before her seemed to be kind towards Mizuha, at least. That's what made him enter the warehouse, despite knowing the danger to himself. If she kills that man, Mizuha will no doubt grieve for him. Yuki's hateful adversary was, in the end, Mizuha's beloved father. She looked down once more at Mizuha. She was wading in a river of sadness that grew deeper by the moment. The one threatening to burst the upstream dam to bring tears of grief into the ever-smiling eyes of Mizuha and her memories was none other than Yuki herself. Would it be acceptable for her to rob this girl of her father? I'll just stop this, Yuki clearly thought. No, wait. She had idly glanced at Director Shiratori. In that glance, she had just barely caught a glimpse of him reaching for his pocket. That glimpse proved enough to allow her to avoid the attack by a hair's width. I stood next to Usami, watching over the warehouse with bated breath. What do you think, Usami? About what? About what's going on in there. Aren't you worried things might go sour? Of course. But all we can do is wait for the news. This is a pretty drastic measure for you. I mean, I guess that means it might catch Tokita off guard, but still. Yeah. 
sparks flew before her eyes. There was a static pop, like the sound of a discharging bug sapper as it kills a nearby moth. The director's hand closed in on her again. A black object, most likely some sort of taser, shot out at Yuki's face. She leaped to the side in a frantic second dodge. The rumbling roar of electricity rolled past her as she reoriented herself in the battle. Yuki hurled the crowbar she still gripped at her assailant as she put some distance between herself and the surprise attack. Girl, that was stupid. That was patently yeah. stupid. After getting enough ground to think calmly, Yuki scanned her surroundings for anything that could be used as a weapon. You know what could have been used as a weapon? A crowbar. Yeah. Gordon Freeman does a very good job with a crowbar. Oh, you've done it now, she mumbled between rough, distracted pants. That comment was directed at Haru. Are you gonna fight her with a crowbar that you threw away? Yuki never expected she would try to use the hostage to take her down. As Yuki eyed her opponent, she realized his submissive aura had entirely disappeared. That's weird, because he's been simpering the entire time we've seen him, ever. Yeah. Adrenaline's a hell of a drug. Director Shiratori was now grinning like a madman. He is also armed, and she is not, so he, pro he probably feels at a significant advantage. Because she threw her crowbar. Yes. Idiot. You turned out just as goddamn insolent as your mother. He drew one step nearer. You've been planning on attacking me ever since I asked you to swap for Misaha. I'd do anything for my daughter. She's your daughter too, you idiot. How can you say that with a straight face? She'd been careless. She looked down at her haggard attacker. I knew something was odd. You were brought in here expecting a swap, but you never once demanded that I release Misaha. Now that she critically analyzes her memory of the director's entrance, she should have known this was coming. His eyes held some kind of plan, and his lips, stiff with fear, were smeared with lies. I've never heard Misa say anything bad about you, so I let my guard down. Not that I've ever heard anything good about you, either. Misa was too sweet to speak up, so she had likely been sitting on her dissatisfaction for years. But I'll be damned if you don't have one heck of a poker face. The director laughed. You gotta be able to lie convincingly if you want to keep the police off your back. He had managed to avoid prosecution for the recent bribery scandal, after all. He used those same sly tricks to accuse my mother of a crime she didn't commit and throw us out of the house, didn't you? I have no idea what you're talking about. All I can say is that we were able to buy some company vacation property and put up a summer house there the year Masami left. Maybe I should go visit her grave and thank her for that. Don't call it company property. That's a private villa, isn't it? It hadn't taken a genius to figure out that the money her mother supposedly embezzled had ended up in the director's pocket. Don't you have an ounce of shame? A woman who takes hostages has no right to lecture me. But I won't make excuses. Your children wouldn't understand the difficulties of corporate management, so I won't waste time on them. You'd better get off that soapbox this instant, you disgusting hog of a man. I'm just trying to keep to my role as a simple bad guy to my daughter. I do this out of love for you two. Or would you rather hear... The whole story. No thanks. Yuki knew that her biological father was also an illegitimate child. He'd always hated his parents, and used that drive to build a company from the ground up with nothing but the clothes on his back. You were always a smart girl, Yuki. The second I heard you were back in town, I knew I wouldn't be getting off easily. That's why I don't mind giving you the five million yen your man demanded at the school. Thanks, Dad. But murder is the wrong way to go about this. Revenge is something that needs to be taken in a manner that the law can overlook. Those few words perfectly defined Director Shiratori. He wasn't a greedy, middle-aged buffoon scared half to death of the police and the media's hounding. Neither was he a kind father, worried about his beloved Mizuhu. 
He was a selfish, arrogant incarnation of evil. No, give up already. Let's get out of here. I won't hand you over to the police. I couldn't stand to see my daughter imprisoned. Don't lie to me, you sack of filth. What you couldn't stand to see is another Shira toy scandal. Isn't that right? Yuki's old curiosity idly wondered how a man with no sense of right and wrong became so powerful in society. Come here. He took another step towards her, taser brandished and ready. There was nowhere left to run. Well, if you had a crowbar. Yuki's back was pressed against a crate, the taut tarp covering it crinkling as she tried to retreat further. Then, her eyes shot open wide. Stop it! 